Hello learners, uh, myself Dr. Aman from Department of Educational Studies, Central University of Jammu. Welcome all of you in the NIOS studio and I am going to have some discussions with you people on the topic collection and uh, representation of data which is coming under 504 course. So let's going to start. Firstly, friends, I am going to discuss with you uh, on which point I am concentrating on uh, my discussion. So firstly, it will be confined that you will be able to describe the term data. Then the main focus of this, this discussion would, would be on how to collect data and obviously you will be in a position to classify data into its various types and you will be able to describe the sources, various sources of data and will be able to organize data in distributions. Now I am coming to the collection and representation of data. As friends, all of you know that this is the era of information and of course right from the dawn of human race, information is lying everywhere. So wherever you go or in which office you work or as student where you are learning, you, you always co collect data. And when we try to collect data, we, 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 we are having some, you know, procedures also. And after collection, we have to arrange the data and then we have to process that data and we have to draw inferences. Friends, this will be becoming more easier if I take the example of a teacher. Likewise, he is going in the class, he is taking the attendance of the students, he is conducting some tests. So you see, these all kinds of information he or she is collecting from the students and then they are processing, the teachers are arranging data, then they are processing them and obviously in the end they are coming to certain conclusions. So friends, this is all about, uh, you know, the basics, what we do with data and how, how we have to manage uh, that data according to our own purposes. Different people working in the management, in the different activities, working in schools, in higher education institutions, everybody, every teacher, every non-teaching employee of those institutions, they usually perform all these tasks. Now, I am going to define the term data uh, from this slide. As we have already, already discussed that as a teacher or as any employee, we collect several type of information and all these information has to be expressed in some, in some form. And when that form, obviously we select certain forms and if that form is in numerical form, then we call that information as data. Friends, again I am going to put stress on this uh, point that numerical description of the required information will be called data. But numerical doesn't mean that only you have to be in a position that a uh, 1, 2, 3 would be somewhat uh, indicating somewhat different meanings. But uh, you know, if 1 would be there, it may be a kind of class. It's not the marks obtained by the students or 25 number is there. So then we can say thus a data is a collection of numbers gathered to give some useful information. Now friends, I am com coming to the various types of data as just I discussed in the previous slide. Uh, we have described, we have defined data that whenever we are trying to give numerical value to the information, it is becoming data. But obviously in this slide, you are watching that data, we have written that data is comprised of two types, qualitative and quantitative. So far qualitative data is concerned. So we have written here that it consists of attributes, labels or non-numerical entries. So non-numerical, I mean to say, I was telling you that when information is given numerical description, then it is becoming data. So it would be a kind of confusion, it would be creating a kind of confusion among in your minds. 
uh, that I want to clarify that non-numerical doesn't mean that one is indicating only achievement or something. No, one is again indicating a kind of category also friends. Likewise, we can assign one to males and one to females that I've quoted example also genders uh, of athlete, etc. So when you are getting such kind of data, this kind of data, if you are getting, then it is called qualitative data. Now I'm coming to the second type that is quantitative data. Friends, it is, it, can, it is consisting of numerical measurement or counts. Obviously, uh, when I was discussing the definition of the data, you will be directly, you know, inferring that definition in context of quantitative data. So I, I just try to, you know, distinguish or differentiate between qualitative and quantitative data. In quantitative data, it would be in the form of certain kind of measurements. Likewise, I am measuring the achievement level of certain class of the students. So in, if in mathematics, two, three, three students are getting 10, 15 and 20 marks, so then obviously I would be in a position to say that the data I am getting from the achievements from these students would be quantitative in nature. So friends, I hope that you have understood the meaning of qualitative and quantitative data. Now we are proceeding ahead. Now, you know, I have quoted uh, one exercise for you people. The answer of which is given in the next slide also. Suppose this is the example we are getting that the marks of five students in science subjects out of 50 are listed in the table, which is in the next slide. Which data are qualitative data and which are quantitative data? So you just go through uh, this slide. I have written left side would be your the names of the students and the right side there are the marks obtained by those students. So I've written the answer also of this example which would be clear that under the names I have written that this kind of data you know I am getting the names of all the students that is qualitative type of data. And friends if I am coming to the marks obtained by them that is quoted there 39, 42, 28, 35, 40 this kind of information or data, this kind of data, we are calling it quantitative type of the data. So from this example, it is clear. And you know, in, in qualitative form, I can call or I can classify this whole data in male and female form also. Or I can assign one category to all the male students and two category to all the female students. So this with this example, it is clear that what would be a qualitative type of data and what would be a quantitative type of data. Then moving ahead friends, uh, again when we are coming across you know to play with the quantitative data, we have to again divide it into two types or it is divided into two types. So that is there, one form is discrete data and second one is continuous data. That means discrete quantitative data and continuous quantitative data. We will discuss these two parts one by one and I would like to clarify the meaning of these both terms. So coming to the discrete data, you know this kind of data, the results when the number of possible values is either a finite number or a countable number of possible values that is 0, 1, 2, 3 form. If your data, quantitative data, if you are getting that in the form of this type that is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, then you would be calling this type of data as discrete data. Example I have quoted in the bottom also that is number of absentees in a class that if you getting that I am getting this number as the absentees today in my class next year. And if you are making the chart of absentees of whole week, then obviously the data you are getting from this whole, uh, for whole work of the week will be your discrete type of data. Again, I'm going to remind you friends, which can be counted. So 
This was the example of discrete data. Now what is continuous data? That is numerical data results from infinitely many possible values that corresponds to some continuous scale that covers a range of values without gaps, interruptions or jumps. The example I have quoted friends, that means the amount of milk that a cow produces, for example 2.5 gallons per day. Per day when we are writing this thing, that means every day we are collecting certain kind of information in the form of numbers and we have quoted what amount we are getting. Because we have written that there should be no gap, no interruptions, no jump in that measurement of data. The example will be similar friends, if we are going to calculate the temperature of whole day from the thermometer. That means we are in a position to read and if we are reading that temperature after every one hour, if we are getting that kind of information, then that kind of data will also be continuous data. In when, when we are conducting certain kind of uh, tests on our students, the data we are getting it, you know, achievement levels of the students in some subject and when we are arranging that data then obviously it will be in the form of some series. This type of data we are calling it continuous data. Now friends after discussing about data, its types, now we are coming to where from we can get data and what are the main sources of data. So, so far the sources of data are concerned they are friends mainly of two types that is primary data and secondary data. So firstly we are going to discuss about primary data. So as it is obvious from the word itself primary that we have written here that the data which are collected directly from the source those kinds of data friends are called primary data. That means directly you are going to the source and you are getting that type of data instead of you are getting uh, it uh, to somebody else. No, you are directly going to the phenomena or you are going, uh, as a teacher you are directly going to the class and you are directly taking certain kind of data from your student. That kind of data would be called primary data. The example I have quoted also suppose a teacher taking his students to a picnic then before sending the small students to the picnic, you can have their choices of fruits. So every student will be having a different choice of fruits as we have quoted that somebody may prefer apple, somebody may prefer oranges, banana, guava and likewise teacher is preparing the list of all, all these data. So such kind of information you are directly getting from the students such kind of information friends will be called primary source of data and the population where from you are getting this kind of information is a primary source. There from you are getting that kind of information. Now friends, I am coming to the second category of the data that are secondary sources. That we have written here, obviously again it is clear from the word that it would be from you know from secondary thing that means you, you are not going directly to the phenomena or suppose as a teacher my head of the department wants to have some information about the students attendance from my register then he is checking my register then he has to check my register then the information my head is getting from my register that that kind of data would be called secondary type of data that we have written over here also that means uh, various departments maintain the record of or pension records or income of the people such kind, such kind of records are being kept by many offices. So if, if that, that document is accessed by you people then obviously you will be collecting information from the secondary source. Best examples of this these are the reports you know the records which include the census reports or some kind of information may be lying with the municipality, panchayat office. So there you are not going directly, you are going directly 
but the information available in those offices would be a kind of secondary source. So wish friends you have now understood what are primary and secondary type of sources of data. Now again I want to add something to this that is thus the data which are collected indirectly that is from the documents containing the information collected for some other purpose such indirect source of data called secondary source as I have discussed in my previous discussion also. Now, now you know when we are getting certain kind of information from the sources that will not be a kind of systematic that may or may not be systematic. So that thing which that that kind of information which we are getting from primary and secondary sources that would be in a uh, form of raw data. So now we are trying to define what is actually raw data. So the data collected from different sources which are not arranged or organized in any manner are called raw data. So two things are mainly missing. They are not well organized and they will not be well organized. You know if you are going to some office you are getting some data obviously they will be giving you some document you are quickly you are collecting something then you have to manipulate or organize or arrange that data as per your own purposes for example we have, quote, we have quoted that the runs scored by the Tendulkar in different innings of a test series are the 16, 56, 25 so you know you are watching in this series that there is no certain kind of arrangement we have done in this data so here the runs are not organized in any manner and hence are the examples of raw data. Now friends after understanding what is raw data now we are proceeding ahead with new term that is distribution. So firstly we will try to define it. So the data you know in previous slide we discussed what is raw data anything we are directly getting or indirectly getting from the sources that would be called raw data. So now we have to arrange that data as per our requirement. So the data are arranged in groups on the basis of certain aspects is called distribution. When we will be trying to arrange that raw data in the light of certain aspects friends only then we will be calling this as a distribution and those different certain aspects they would be friends the marks obtained by certain students suppose we are getting that kind of data and of course the age of the student may also be there we can have the the you know the height of different students in particular classes then income group of various employees working in certain departments they are collected the scores of distribution so they are, these are the aspects under these aspects if we manage we try we organize that data in certain form that would be called friends distribution now i have quoted certain examples of these distributions where it is not row that is uh, marks obtained by 8 students in mathematics out of 25 are these are the marks then heights of students these will be 95 centimeter then the raw data is to be organized after it is collected this we have already discussed then directly now we are friends coming to the organization of data if the raw data consists of a few scores then we arrange them in ascending that means increasing or in descending order that means decreasing then it would be called an arranged type of data. So hope you got it the, got the meaning you, you observe the previous slide also the data we got we got in it, it was not systematic we have not systematized it we have not arranged that data in ascending or descending order you are watching this example also previous exa example so 
when we will be arranging that data in certain arrangement may be in ascending order or may be in descending order that type of data will be called arranged or arrayed data. So now these were the examples raw data we have quoted that the marks secured by 12 students in a unit test out of 25 suppose these are the marks 15, 7, 23, 10, 18, 19, 21, 20, 11, 17, 16 and 21. Then when we are arranging we have arranged this data in the increasing order that means at the first place we have placed the number 7 which is the least number in this whole distribution. So after 7 the highest the, the next high score we are getting from the above distribution is 9. So we are placing this score at the place second. Likewise there would be 10, there would be 11, 15, then again 15, 17, 18, 20, 21, 21. So likewise they, they are, are now arranged in some increasing order. So to summarize about this whole discussion friends, we discuss something about what is data actually and what is raw data, what are the various types of data. We tried to classify different types of data in which we classified quantitative form of data, qualitative form of data also and we, we discuss those points with the help of certain examples also. Then friends, we discussed about the various sources of data what are the various various things, various places, various various you know uh, points where from we are we, we we can get data properly? So we classified the various sources of data into two categories. Those were primary and secondary type of data. In primary, you would have gone to directly uh, to the source of the data, and you are directly getting that data from that particular source. And in secondary type type of data you are getting through some medium. The things have already happened and these, those were recorded and then those, those recordings are provided to you people. Then that kind of information or source of information would be called secondary data. Then we discussed what that kind of data what we are getting from those sources that was that will not be in some shape that would be in the form of raw material. Likewise we are getting uh, coal from the from the you know mines coal mines that is not usable we have to make that data usable same happens with the data also so what we are getting from the sources that would be in a form of raw raw data and we convert that in the form of distribution we put it in certain form then after putting that in the form of distribution we try to organize that data in certain forms they would be maybe in ascending orders or maybe in descending orders and we just try to manipulate those data. Friends, again in qualitative form of data we try to, to uh, tell you that that, uh, that will be in the form of counts also that we have quoted examples also in, in you know qualitative type of data we, we can assign certain numbers to male and female data. So that kind of uh, also system uh, is one of the system on the basis of which we can organize data. So with this discussion that uh, uh, with this discussion friends uh, hope you understood how we can collect data and how we can arrange or represent that type of data. With these words uh, I, I extend my heartly thanks to NIUS and to you all listeners. Thank you very much friends.